This area was really well known to our ancestors. They came to here, they camped, they had sites where they always returned to. The buffalo followed the stars, and we followed the buffalo. My grandmother told me about the Lakota way of life. The Lakota woman, she has to be really strong. I'm pretty sure she cries, but it's always hidden because she has to show that strength to the family so that they can grow that strength too. So that's her role in the Lakota way of life. My grandfather picked this area because of the creek and the water, the canyons and the trees. My name is Leola One Feather and I live at Munditney. And this is where I grew up. Get out of there. My grandmother bought this trailer house. It's been here for 40 years. And we haven't had running water for probably when the trailer house shifted. God, it was so long ago, like 30 years ago. My mom and dad and I, that was our bed. I finally outgrew them, <laughs> but it was so cold in the winter, I'd, I'd have to sleep between them. Nochba. Nochba means push your foot in, like cave it in, that's what it means. <laughs> yeah, you broke it, that was your birthday present. I just got on Social Security, and since I got these kids, I didn't get any assistance for them. Um, they gave me $308 for food stamps for three of them. Their mom is in jail right now. So our kids get in trouble, whether it's drugs or drinking or whatever. Now the burden of the children in our tribe is set on this grandmother. Take this back in there and go in there and behave. We're talking, you're not listening. For all of our tribe, there's only like 2,000 jobs. It's all dependent on the federal contracts that our tribe gets. And we don't have a private sector, so we don't have the money to do startup businesses. We still have good land, you know, and, and, and it does bother a lot of people because we're surrounded by racism. We didn't want to be Americans. <laughs> 
willing to just be our own people. Growing up in a home where the language is predominantly Lakota, I didn't know how to read Lakota, but I learned. We have our stories of creation and, and how we develop over time. So we have a whole different process that uh, Americans haven't been able to figure out. <laughs> they can't figure out why we think different. <laughs> In our culture, the girls are more emotionally protected. We live on a merit system, so a girl might do things that are really brave or she um, engaged in battle and saved children and lives or did something real heroic. She'll have the respect and honor of the same as a man. So that's why I just don't really hang out with them. Oh, yeah, we got puppies. We got puppies. Oh, poor baby. Oh, puppy. I go different places. I mostly go to my grandma's. She took care of me for two years. Here you go. You can have the puppy back. She has, like, um... I forgot what those things were where you take a kid away from your parents. Before my grandma took me, I used to have an uncle that took care of me. He he got buried out close to Red Cloud School. Yeah, I only go see him once in a while, but um, I didn't really see him because it's sad for me. really go to school because I had a runny nose. So what I did in the morning was just eat um, oatmeal and then took another nap and played on my phone. Hey, Jake. What's one plus two? One plus two. Jake, do you want to interview What's Three. one? Okay. What one. is three plus two? No. Nope. Wrong. What's three plus two? The only thing I usually do is clean. I clean. Well, not really. But I usually help my grandpa do things. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Santa.
Her and I, that's four generations. I'm the, um, the Lakota woman. Right, right, right. Say yes. Say Lakota Wea. Lakota Wea. We're here at the Oglala Lakota Band. We got a mean loss of identity here due to forced assimilation. The government done a good job on us. They're using a some kind of cultural module called self hate. More they had us ashamed of who we were. You're listening to the Thunder Valley CDC Radio Hour. Welcome to the Thunder Valley CDC Radio Hour. We'd just like to know what you're up to here on Pine Ridge today. We're working with Native American nations in the U.S. to establish what we call girl societies which are neighborhood-based safe places where girls can go to have fun, but also talk about problems and be able to pursue opportunities. I'm Kelly Hallman. I'm a Cherokee Nation citizen from Oklahoma. Am I a community member visitor? Is that what I am? Or? I'm the founder and executive director of the Indigenous Adolescent Girls Empowerment Network. Do I need a seat? Is this where we're meeting tomorrow? Yes, so this oh, is the fabulous. space that you'll meet tomorrow. It's really a neat facility. There is none like it on, on the Oglala Lakota Nation whatsoever. We put out a call for tribal organizations to learn the planning tools to set up a girl society. All of you probably came here for a reason. There's something in your mind about what's going on with girls in your community. It's more about the general social and um, emotional supports that girls need. 
I speak for our reservation because this is where I've been. We're not supportive of one another and it's time now to let that all go because we have to support one another and we have to bring that together for our daughters and our future. That's why I feel like these programs are so important to teach our young girls to have pride in themselves and who they are and how to protect and understand their sacredness of being Lakotak Wayans and what that means. You don't want to prepare them to be victims, to be those statistics. We have like parents selling their babies, caregivers selling their babies. We have dealers in Parmalee that are saying, here you go, come get high, come get high, here you go. Oh, now you owe me 500 bucks, so guess what? I'm gonna haul your butt up to Rapid and you're gonna work it off for four or five days before I bring you home. I've worked with four young girls in Parmalee that were victims and the trafficking was in Rapid and they were brought home. What our people struggle with is addiction. Mm -hmm. And so they're struggling with the addiction of either alcohol or a drug of meth, marijuana, or opiates. How do we teach them at a young age to, to know who they are and to be strong? And no matter if your friends are doing it or whatever, you're strong enough to say no. How many of us adults know the phone numbers for a suicide hotline, our DD help support lines? Suicide is such a hard issue and it affects, you know, all of us. How many of us in the room have somebody who's committed or attempted within our family or within our friend circle? What got those babies so far down here to be hopeless, right? And so that's the purpose of the Imagine programming is to build those baby girls up. We have a strong belief that the women are sacred women being the backbone of our society. So I think having a strong girl society and a strong womanhood um, will help our communities grow and thrive in the conditions that we have. My name is Amy Pond. I'm from Pine Ridge, South Dakota. I um, born and raised there which is the um, village, the middle of the reservation. Wait, 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 hold on. This is home to me. Um, my family's here. I was a little bit lucky, I guess, um, in, in that aspect. Um, both my parents were employed, my parents were married. When I was young, my dad um, decided to quit drinking, so I, right off the bat, kind of had an advantage. I wanted to go to school elsewhere. I wanted to get off the reservation for a little while, um, just to see things, um, learn as much as I could. So I finished my master's program and then I uh, started um, looking for jobs here back home. And I want that to be the norm for girls. Standing here. Stuff. Mm. with the historical oppression that Native American people have experienced here in the U.S., family structures are often broken down. And so sometimes it's the teenage girls in the household that are the real sort of supports of both their mothers and grandmothers as well as the younger children. So girls have a, a lot more on their plates than boys do in terms of pregnancy risk, in terms of dropping out of school, in terms of having to shoulder the responsibilities of heading a family.
Traditionally, in Native communities, there were societies to accomplish different things. There was a war society, there was often an agricultural society, a hunting society, there was a society to do coming-of-age ceremonies. The matrilineal traditions in many Native cultures meant there were women's societies to get things done. When to plant crops, when to make feasts according to moon and sun. Gender is really such a core piece of who we are as Native people. You know, women have particular strengths and men have particular strengths. We have like roles that we play and that's how we've survived. When I was growing up as a kid, we moved around a lot because my father had a mobile job and so it was always important to remember where I was from and who I was. sort of want to be closer to home. Looking at what role I might play in Indian country. My name is uh, Nikon Wayridan, or Thunder Before the Storm. My colonial name is Clyde Belcourt, and I'm one of the founders of the American Indian Movement. I come here every year to celebrate this great victory that took place here. And I was one of the main people to bring the people here to Wounded Knee in 1973. We had a lot of women, and the women were strong. A lot of us women, when we were young, we were really into the American Indian movement. I'm sure that, you know, I have a pretty thick um, file with the FBI. <laughs> When we came here, it was going to be a peaceful occupation and liberation of this community. The very next morning, when we woke up, and they gave me some binoculars, and all the way in this hill, all the way around us, there was armored personnel carriers. We were surrounded by all the uh, federal agencies, the military. The BIA police are really vicious. This government has done everything it's cut. Stripped us of our language, our culture, our tradition, and our land and our water. 
and they thought that we would surrender. So we put our minds together and said, we're not going anywhere. This is our land. We're going to stand up. And we're going to show our Indian people how to stand up again and be warriors. We'll get you down. Get you dark quay, women warrior. We're expecting in all nine districts for there to be a girl society. It's open to all girls. There's uh, fun things that girls will do, sewing, beading, playing hand games, other things like that. And so you'll also learn skills too, like how to prepare to get into college, how to get scholarships. I'm happy to answer any questions, but otherwise I'll turn it over to Amy to give you some more details about exactly what they're doing here. Um, so yeah, there's a question. <laughs> question? Oh, okay. it de depends on where you go. <laughs> depends. We could talk about that at the, at the Girls Society next week. Another really important part um, of this is we want to make sure girls are able to um, learn about our, our culture. They're able to learn about the ceremonies. Maybe we'll be able to take them to a sweat or something. Or we'd like to take them on field trips to the sacred sites. Um, but how this really works is through mentoring. So we'll have um, older girls, girls around my age, women older, younger women that are gonna run these girls groups. They'll be in every community, like Callie said. They'll be at the same place, same time, every day of the week so that girls have a place to go um, where they feel safe and where they feel like they could talk about girl things with other girls and females. Um. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else or doing anything else. As far as feeling like a sacrifice for being here, no, not at all. The opposite. <laughs> a lot of times our girls and our people in general are overlooked and undercounted, underrepresented, and just need to have a stronger voice. So fill this out, I could take it with me and then we could start one like at the school or something. And they, the girls could actually go ahead and fill it out yeah. and turn it back into me. I don't want their names or anything. And we talk a lot about liberation, about self-determination. We want to start it in Pine Ridge. I'm just looking for more mentors. We talk about sovereignty and being self-reliant. We want people to feel like we're not stuck and that there's hope. Yeah, it's kind of like a talking circle, and there'll be some fun activities and hopefully field trips, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Happen every week. Once a week, yeah. Yep. I want to be a doctor because I like to help people feel better when they're sick and stuff. <laughs> Never mind. I'm glad with you. 
I would like to go and live in a big city, like in New York or somewhere. I want to be in the ER, probably go like, to college, have a good college, good grades, get my master's, and have a good life. I want to go to high school and finish finish high school. I want to go to college, and after that, I want to like um, I want to go to the Air Force. That's the travel. Do you guys ever want to go? Do the crowd. I want to be like my auntie, cause she was in the Air Force for like three or five years, and then she made it sound cool. But then it was a little. She said it was a little hard to fly because there's a whole bunch of um buttons. I'm like. But I can think I can get him in my head because I'm really strong, so I can do it. And then I also want to have a good house and a good life and sometimes take care of my grandpa. Yeah. Yeah, I'm